Now we're going to take a look at waterfall charts. So welcome back to SharePoint Charts Complete Training. And we're going to just focus on this one chart for this session. This is closely related to bar charts. It's a variation of a bar chart where we're looking at an accumulation of values over time. In our training session, we're going to look at a month-to-month -month, uh, profits trend to see what happens as they go up and down. And you'll see um, this displays that information in a way that um, helps to focus in on the difference, whether it went up or down. In the end, it shows an accumulation. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So let's jump in. So we're on section uh, waterfall charts in the SharePoint Charts Complete Training. So just go to that section. Um, if this is a new chart to you, if you want to do a little more digging just to understand an explanation of how people have used these, you can just click on the link there that'll pop up in a window for you. What we need to do is create a new SharePoint list in our uh, charts training site. So the first thing you should do is get that Excel workbook and we want to start by getting that loaded to our training site. So I'm going to open that up. It's called monthlyprofits.xlsx and um, let's get that in view and take a look at what we have for data. Um, so nothing earth shattering. We just have a title column with months of the year and then this chart if you look in the instructions you'll find it needs to have its final column label, labeled total and that should have a start value of zero and an end value which is the total accumulated sum of all the values in the months. So for each record there is a start value and an end value and you're going to see how that's going to translate um, in our chart in a second. So to get our list created what we need to do is go ahead and click on the table design tab in Excel, click on export and export table to SharePoint list, just like our other training sessions. Get your SharePoint charts training URL handy and then you can paste that in um, to Excel and as always I will name this matching my Excel workbook. So this is going to be list called monthly profits. Next and that's fine you can just click finished it will make your list click OK and you're done with the workbook you don't need to do anything more with that for your training so we're looking for this new list called monthly profits so I'm going to go into my site contents and I can see there's the new list that was created I'm clicking on that and the first thing I want to do is make some adjustments in the list I don't want the grid view so I'll go to the gear icon, then click on list settings, click on advanced settings, scroll to the bottom, and then uh, we want to turn off quick property editing. That will get rid of that grid view that we don't want to see. And I'll change the list experience to new experience. Okay, I can just click on monthly profits and return back. And then I also want to Go ahead and adjust my view. Um, I'm going to get rid of that type column. I don't really need to see that. Okay, so the type column is gone. We do a refresh. And then let's go ahead and create a new view for our waterfall chart. So I'll just do save view as and call it waterfall. Okay, there's waterfall and I want to get a nice name for the view so let me do um, edit current view and if I just save right away then we're going to get a URL that's more user friendly and as I've been doing in the rest of the training I'm going to add it to my quick link. So let's go ahead and edit the page and I'll go to my main quick links at the top and I'm just pasting in that URL for my waterfall chart and I will give it a nice friendly name. I don't want .aspx on the end. Um, I'll pick an icon and we'll try to find something that matches. I seriously doubt it's going to have a waterfall icon, but I've been wrong in the past. So let's do charts. 
and see if I see anything that closely resembles that. Um, this is a real special kind of chart, so I'm not going to do a lot of searching to try and find something. It's somewhat like a bar chart. That's close enough. I'll select that one, and there we go. There's our waterfall. Um, I'm going to click on this. I want to move it down to the end of my quick link since it's my last most recent chart, republished page. And that's it for the hump page updates. I can go back to my waterfall chart now. All right, um, let's go ahead and get rid of that type column. I'm going to go show or hide columns and let's get type off there. I don't care about that. There we go. Uh, now we're ready to go. So coming back to the training content, there is a link to the waterfall chart template. If you click on that, it's going to pop open our template that we're going to use and there we go we see a preview of the waterfall chart so um, it's pretty simple to understand so let's just walk through our test data to see what's going on here so basically what this shows is we had a value of 300 for january and then in the next month it went from 300 up to 500. The labels in this case are not indicating the total value. It's indicating the positive or negative difference um, compared to the preceding month. And when it goes up, you see one color. In this case, it's green. When it goes down, as in the case for April, May, you see a different color, red, and a negative label. So it's highlighting the difference comparing the current month to the preceding month as we go along. And then at the very end, it shows the accumulated total with a full bar from wherever the value is at the end, um, starting with zero. So that's the idea behind the waterfall chart. Okay, let's scroll down and look at the instructions. It tells us a little bit about what it needs. It needs a title field, start field, and end for each of the records. And of course, that's what our training data has. We need to give it the names of the fields. Let's go ahead and verify that. So in my list, I have title, start, and end. That does match up with SharePoint. So in this case, we're getting off easy. I don't have to make any changes to that. I'm gonna take off the background gradients for training. We're gonna skip that. If you want to use background gradients, there is information in the notes section, just click on custom icons help and you can download a folder of images which includes background gradients which you can load to your site if you're interested in using that feature. So as with the other templates, the first thing I really like to do is just get going quickly. Now looking at the test data, you're going to notice that 2000 is too small. We need to set a max that's more representative of the data we're working with. In our case, that should be more like 10,000. And then I also don't want my chart to say my waterfall chart. I want to uh, match up with our data. So I'm going to say monthly profits. Okay, so made a couple minor adjustments and that should be enough to get us started. So we're going to go ahead and copy the template, then follow the directions, and then I can come back over to SharePoint Click on the uh, list view drop down and then click on format current view, then advanced mode, and select all, paste, and save. There we go. Great, we're off and running. So let's look at what we have and see what kind of adjustments we may want. So you can see on the scale, it's ranging from zero to 10,000. That's good, that's what we were looking for. And then we have the months going left to right, January, February, March, etc. Now, what it's doing is actually doing the math on the values. So these labels we see in the month columns, it's showing the difference. So when the value goes down, it's subtracting the April value from the Mar March. Um, it's finding the difference between those and highlighting that. Um, so let's look at some of the settings. One thing I noticed right away, I'd like to see my chart a little bit taller. So I can adjust that by just changing the canvas height. Let's make that 500 and I'll just copy the template again. Um, that's just a quick adjustment that'll significantly change the appearance and fill my screen a little bit better. So I just paste that in. Okay, so now we're filling the page a little bit better. 
maybe I want the colors to look slightly different. So we obviously are going to have configurations on colors like we do with the other templates. So if I come back over here, you're going to see settings, positive bar color and negative bar color. Uh, maybe I don't want this to just stand out so badly. So maybe I want to do um, blue for whatever reason. Now if I do that, I need the M bar color to be different because otherwise that's a little bit confusing. So maybe the M bar color is instead going to be orange. Um, it's really according to whatever your preferences are. Um, let's change the up bar color and make that slightly different. Um, you know, just to change things up, just to illustrate the fact that we can uh, do something different for that. So I'll change that to a lighter green. And then we've got other settings as well. The column width may be something you might want to tweak slightly. So maybe if I want to make it a little bit um, narrower, I can change that. That'll bring in the width of the whole chart, make it narrower. Um, or I could even make it a little bit wider. You know, it's just according to however you want to do it. So let's change that to 90. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy the template and make an update and paste. So just paste that in there and you can see those changes propagated through to my template. All right, let's go back. Let's examine and see any other kind of options we want. We can change the bar width percentage. Um, so if I increase that, you'll see that it fills the column more. Um, if you want to have it kind of more filling the interva interface, you also notice there's a 3D bar effect and you may not want that or might not like that. If you want just more of a flat interface, you can do that. Um, by default, um, it's kind of giving you that 3D effect that's set at five. So let's change it to three. So it's more of a subtle effect. And then the scale width, um, that's just the left column. So we're fine with that. We can go ahead and leave that the way it is. And then um, we have things like the bar border width. Maybe you want to make that a little thicker for whatever reason. Um, and then we can do things like adjust the border color. Maybe I want a sharper contrast. So now I've changed that over to black. So you can make those subtle tweaks to get this to look however you want. Since we're dealing with money, maybe I want to have a dollar sign in front of it. So I just made that adjustment as well. And then these labels, these value labels, I can adjust the background color on that. Maybe I want that to stand out a little bit more. So I just put a light yellow on there. Um, so you can make all the, those fine tuning adjustments after you get your main chart dialed in. So I'm going to copy the template and, uh, you know, I made those adjustments that can come back to SharePoint, format the current view and paste. All right. So whatever look you think is going to be good, you can fiddle with that and fine tune that just according to um, what you think is going to look nice, what's going to present best to your users. Um, and then obviously you can also control font sizes and colors. All of those things are adjustable from the configuration settings. So there you go. That's a waterfall chart. Whenever you're working with bar charts, especially where you have columns, this is something that you may want to think about. This is an alternative type of bar chart um, that will interest your users and maybe think about the data in a different way. It thinks about um, you know, what's happening on a month to month basis. All right. So that was a quick one. Uh, this was just another version of a bar chart, um, that you can do. So especially when you've got trending data, when you're looking at a time frame, maybe comparing progressive years or months, weeks, days, when you have a progression of time and you want to identify a trend, this is the way to look at that trend and think about that data. Um, so there you go. There's another type of bar chart in your toolbox. And in our next session, we're going to look at yet another interesting kind of chart, which is closely related to the bar charts, which can uh, examine even a different uh, type of data trend. Hope you like that and hope you're able to get your own uh, waterfall chart going with data in your own organization. Good luck.